Asseyez-vous, s'il vous plaît. Ok, so we are proceeding uh, to the first session, which will deal with several aspects of the general background. And the first speaker will be uh, Dr. Stefan Petke <coughs> from the Technische Universität, Technical University in Berlin. Dr. Petke was born in Berlin and he still lives there. He studied history, political science, and Islamic studies, studies at the Free University of Berlin, the University of Potsdam, and in Damascus. He graduated with a thesis about Bosnian Muslims in the Second World War, and recently Dr. Pen uh, uh, Petke finished his doctoral thesis about Muslims in the German Wehrmacht and Waffen-SS during World War II at the Center for Studies on Antisemitism at the Technical University of Berlin. Currently, is working on a postdoc project about non-European veterans of the Second World War from the Mediterranean region, and his lecture of today will <coughs> be 1941 as a turning point: Nazi Germany's changing perceptions of the Middle East. Dr. Petke, the floor is yours. And somebody forgot a pen here, so it's kept. <coughs> First of all, thank you for the invitation for the chance to present my lecture here. Um, so the topic of my lecture is how uh, Professor uh, Michman uh, mentioned 1941 as a turning point, the changing perception of the Middle East by Nazi Germany. If we talk about the perception of the Middle East and the Arabic Islamic world by Nazi Germany until 1941, we have to distinguish between the Nazi movement with the allied like Hitler, Himmler, Goebbels and others and theorists and scientists from so-called area studies. For the Nazi allied, the result is pretty ev obvious. Even if we know about Hitler's romantic views about Muslim groups based on his knowledge from Karl May novels and Himmler's plans to immigrate to Turkey when he was in his 20s, as well as Himmler's journey to Libya in uh, 1938 and Goebbels' visit to Cairo, Istanbul and Ankara in 1939, all three were convinced of the racial status of Turks and especially Arabs as racial degenerated. Like Hitler wrote in My Kampf, he was not willing to associ associate the destiny of the German people to suppressed colonial nations. It is not surprising that no long-term strategic cooperations with Arab groups or national movements in Syria, Lebanon, Palestine or Iraq was established in the years 1933 to 1941. We heard about it today that there was cooperation, but it was somehow limited to financial support or propaganda, and especially to the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. But Hitler tried to avoid, in these early years of the Nazi era, to avoid serious conflicts with Great Britain and Italy as the colonial powers in this region. He always thought that he can somehow get into a cooperation with Great Britain at the beginning of the Nazi era. As we all know, Hitler located his colonies, or how it's called in German, its Lebensraum, in Eastern Europe. If we compare this lack of interest with the output of scientists, diplomats, and even some military authors in the leading German journals, we could recognize an intense discussion about the Arabic world and the Middle East in the years 1933 to 1941. For my PhD, I analyzed the leading German academic journals of that time, like the Zeitschrift für Geopolitik, Journal of Geopolitics, published by Karl Haushofer, the Zeitschrift für Politik, Journal for Politics, the uh, Welt des Islam, World of Islam, and the leading military journals like Militär Wochenblatt, weekly military newspaper, and the Militärwissenschaftliche Rundschau, Military Science Review. In all these journals, authors discussed the prospects of success using the national movements in the Middle East to destabilize Great Britain's power in the region. All these discussions would have been theoretical, but as in many other cases, the beginning of the Second World War and its course changed the view and perception 
in our case of the Middle East. In contrast to some authors who emphasized that Nazi Germany engaged itself in the Middle East before the outbreak of the Second World War and used its anti-Jewish politics to increase um, actively its attractiveness among Arabs, I will argue or point more out in the following minutes that less imputative ideological accordance than military considerations were the decisive factors to take action. I am convinced that we can determine even the date when Hitler made his decision in 1941. Before Hitler gave his consent, it was preceded by a multi-annual process, process of various proposals. In January and May 1939, the German embassy in Turkey emphasized the strategic importance of the Middle East and failed in demanding plans, active plans for the capture of the Middle East as the British Isthmus to India. More furore created the study Policy and Warfare in the Middle East from 3rd November 1939 by Oskar Ritter von Niedermeyer. Niedermeyer, a famous member of the German mission to Afghanistan in World War I to transport the jihad to, to the uh, Eastern Muslim world, if you call it, to Afghanistan to destabilize the Brit British people there. Um, and he was at that time, in 1931, a professor for defense policy and defense geography in Berlin. He advised the Armed Force High Command, the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht, to start early preparations for German warfare in the Middle East, at a time where Germany had just started to invade Poland. Or uh, he conquered Poland. Two months after the German attack on Poland, and with the British declaration of war, Niedermeyer's suge uh, suggestions attracted some attention. With Foreign Minister Joachim von Ribbentrop and Chief of the Armed Forces High Command Wilhelm Keitel, the discussion reached the highest authorities. Based on Niedermeyer's study and on behalf of Keitel, a second study was written by Alfred Jodl, Chief of the Operation Staff of the Armed Forces High Command. In his study, Policy and Warfare in the Orient, from January 1940, Jodl recommended a more forceful approach as well, whereas Hitler nourished the hope that Great Britain would drop its resistance. The next attempts to turn the attention towards the Middle East happened two days after the German victory over France. <coughs> On the 24th of June, Niedermeyer handed in a memorandum again with the advice to take advantage of the dynamics and take the initiative in the Mediterranean together with Italy. A week later, also Jodl again recommended German actions at the periphery as well, in order to accelerate the anticipated British defeat. The memoranda of Niedermeyer and Jodl, as well as several attempts of Grand Admiral Erich Reder, chief of the Kriegsmarine, to convince Hitler in 1940 to change the, the German strategy in the Mediterranean, failed. Hitler had already focused up on the Soviet Union. With his directive number 21 from the 18th of December, he subordinated all other war theater to the Operation Barbarossa. But with the unsuccessful attack of Greece in October and the British counteroffensive in North Africa in December 1940, Hitler was forced to support Italy and to stabilize the southern flank in the upcoming war with the Soviet Union. At this point, it is important to emphasize that the foreign ministry was totally dissatisfied with Hitler's lack of interest. And we heard of uh, Fritz Grober in Iraq. He's one of the key uh, figures in that, in that time. And interesting, he fought together with Niedermeyer in World War I at the Palestine Front. They know each other in that time. Um, so the lack of interest in the me Middle East and the incompetence of the Italian ally. They feared heavily a loss of prestige in the Arab world, the foreign ministry, the German foreign ministry. Wilhelm Melchers, chief of the Orient office in the foreign ministry, handed in December 1940 a memorandum to State Secretary Ernst von Weizsäcker, where he proposed to publish a declaration of independence for the Arab countries, increase the support for Arab nationalist, nationalist groups, and give them the promise of German support with the so-called solution of this Jewish question in the Arab world. Werner von Hentig, another famous member of the German mission to Afghanistan, together with Niedermeyer, um, in, first, in, in the First World War, 
was sent in January 1941 in a diplomatic mission to Lebanon and Syria. He met there with several groups of national movements, not only limited to Muslims, also all the other ethnic groups. Um, Hentig's results had been positive enough that Foreign Minister Ribbentrop gave in February 1941 the order for a study about the Arabic question. In his notes on the Arabic question from, 7th March, from the 7th March uh, 1941, Ernst Wörmann, chief of the political department, came to disillusioning results. Neither the Arab nationalist and jihad movements nor a military offensive against Egypt had in his mind, in his opinion, any reasonable chance of success at that time. Instead, Germany should establish structures for successful propaganda in the Arabic, in Arabic <coughs> sorry, and base operations for the military secret service in the Middle East. Wermann uh, Verman emphasized this to strengthen the work of the military secret service because, um, he said, the activities of the Grand Mufti of Jeru Jer Jerusalem hadn't been successful enough. Now the Secret Service should take the initiative with acts of sabotage and the stimulation of rights in Palestine and Transjordania. Until now, we don't know the exact date when Hitler decided to focus, to focus more on the Middle East and why. In my opinion, the visit of Erwin Rommel um, in the Führer's headquarter on the 20th March 1941 is the, un is the uh, unregarded key. The official reason for Rommel's visit was his decoration with the oak leaves of the Night Cross of the Iron Cross. In this occasion, Hitler asked for his assessment of the situation in North Africa. Rommel declared to have the ability to reach Tobruk and the Suez Canal. Hitler, convinced that the Soviet Union will be defeated in a few weeks, postponed the German advance to fall 1941. But now, with Hitler's decision, we can recognize busy activities. On the next day, Ribbentrop met with Wermann and gave him the order to work towards an Arab riot in Iraq and Palestine. Considering that the infrastructure was still missing and all capaci uh, capacities um, were blocked by the preparations for the Operation Barbarossa, Ribbentrop couldn't mean immediate actions. <coughs> Four days after Hitler's decision, Wermann met with Admiral Wilhelm Canaris, chief of the military secret service. Canaris noted as a result of the meeting <coughs> and as future tasks the setup of an intelligence service in the Middle East, acts of sabotage and the stimulation of riots in Palestine, Transjordania and Iraq. For these plans came the coup d'etat in April 1941 in Iraq much too early. But even after the collapse and the British capture of Iraq, Syria and Lebanon until June 1941, the Germans kept their plans alive. In summer 1941, the military secret service started to train German Arabic, German Caucasian and German Turkestan units. Apparently, the German plans aimed in the second half of 1941 at actions from the Middle East to the Caucasus and Central Asia. To conclude my lecture, before the beginning of the war, only scientists and specialists discussed the strategic value of the Middle East, with the British declaration of war increased the interest on policy and warfare in the Orient. Despite several memoranda from 1939 on, Hitler showed no, in, no interest in the Middle East. The Ital Italian setbacks in Greece and North Africa forced him to support his ally with troops, especially the foreign ministry started to take the initiative in the Arabic question. And I want to point out again, we have to, and that is the main focus of my lecture, we have to separate between the military and the uh, foreign ministry. And the foreign ministry in this so-called Arabic question or the focus on the Middle East is, I think, the key, key role, the key player in that, all, in that, in that time. The key moment, um, as I mentioned, was a meeting of Hitler with Rommel on the 20th March 1941, where Hitler decided to take actions in the Middle East after the victory of the Soviet Union, uh, over the Soviet Union. It is interesting to see that several persons tried to direct the focus on the Mediterranean and the Middle East. For military personnel like Keitel, Jodl, Reda and Niedermeyer, was the Middle East the key region to weaken Great Britain. 
but the local Arabic population was no really factor for them. They had the ability only for limited assistance. In contrast, the foreign ministry, the fear of a German loss of prestige, let it take the initiative, even without Hitler's permission, like Hentig's, Otto, uh, uh, like Hentig's mission to Syria and Lebanon in spring 1941. But the final decision was still made by Hitler, and only after that, concrete planning started. We can see that there was no long-term German strategy for the Middle East. Hitler's decision, decisions were situational and sometimes caught up by the developments. In our case, the coup d'etat in Iraq, 1941. Thank you.